Hey folks, how are you doing? So we're gonna be doing that handle, one of the last portions, steps in the knife making. You see the first thing I do is I duct tape the blade really well to make it safe, you know, work with it so I don't cut myself. You wanna do it really well so, you know, to be safe and also prevent the scratches and you know, when you work with it. What I did, I mark just the basic shape outline of the handles into the back of the handle material because I will have to cut it in half and you know to get two pieces that will fit both sizes sometimes it's challenging but sometimes it's no problem cut it with my band so you know you can use tape or so metal so pretty much anything even with the Dremel cut of wheels you can you can cut the handle materials if you really want to you can go a little nicer a little neater I didn't really need it to go to like you know better details this is actually quarter inch reamer to clean up the holes a little bit to make it fit you know sometimes it depends you know it depends on the pivots I'm gonna be using the quarter inch pivots with the removable handles you know with the screws on this handle and uh, the pivots didn't fit into my quarter inch holes which I pre-drill before the heat treat so I had to like grim it out a little bit with the reamer you can do this with the Dremel also, you know, it depends, you'll see, you know, if sometimes they fit perfectly, sometimes you have to rim it out a little bit. I actually got the reamer recently, I wanna try it. It works great on the handle materials, on the metal it's a little tricky, a little harder. I didn't get the really expensive carbide one. Now that's a quarter inch, quarter inch uh, drill, drill bit. And I'm just gonna align them, you know, correctly. Drill a hole, take the pivot. Once I drill the hole, I just take the pivot and hammer it in. It's a really tight fit, so I actually had to hammer it in. I had a little hard time doing this one. So I had to press it in real well so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna be drilling the second hole and I'll do the same thing. I'll put the second pin in there. See, I'm struggling there a little bit. It's a little bit too tight on the beginning. It, uh, it did work in a little more as I, you know, work more and more with it. So I did the first one, put it in, drew the second one, did the same exact thing, you know, put the pivot there. So the at this point, once you have the two pivots, the handle scuss does not move at all, so you can do all the rest of the holes that you need. You know, in my case, it was uh, one more hole in the front and uh, the linear hole, hole in the back. And once I do that, I take the whole thing apart again and do the other scale pretty much the same way, you know, align the scale with the tank. You see I'm drilling the tank hole on the end, the linear hole. Hammering out the pins. Very useful, those little like a metal, metal, kind of like a dice. Uh, they're just metal sticks, like a punch kit, they're like to punch. Uh, punch holes before you drill with all different diameters they're great for punching out like little pins and pivots and all that stuff so the second second scale is gonna be done the same exact way you want to make sure that uh, you don't flip the scales you know you want to make sure that if you have the scale that is that has the uh, layers in certain certain order you want to make sure that both of them come off the tank from the tank the same way you know like this one had the blue liner uh, kind of like a liner so you want to make sure that that liner is on the tank side you know don't it happened bit before to me when there are different handle materials that are a little less obvious you make that mistake when uh, you <laughs> turn turn the one side of the scale the wrong direction see that is actually one of the materials like you because sometimes the CTEC has a, a thicker layer of resin which I like to keep on the tank because that's what keeps the handle material all together nice and you know connected. Now this is what I'm doing, I'm countersinking the holes, I actually use the like a nice uh, car carbide deburring wheel. You just want to make sure that you have it right, like right depth so the screw will actually reach. Uh, the pivot inside because this was a th really thick tank the stack was thick so we're gonna make you know the countersinking was actually pretty deep let's do it a couple of times a little at a time to make sure everything is perfect 
and then once I put it all together and make sure that screws do fit I'll screw it on I'll do just a temporary two screws and two pivots you know like two pivots with two screws on each side and now the shaping of the hand will actually start you know so I screwed it on together make sure that it's nice and tight and now the shaping as you see I use the bottom of the wheel that's actually the best uh, place to do most of the grinding because you have the least resistance there the least friction because the wheel is spinning with the belt unlike on the platen platen is actually staying and the belt is spinning over it so you create friction that uh, that is harder on your grinder and harder on the belts also so as much as you can do comfortably and safely on the contact wheel on the bottom do that it's always better it's faster more more belt and machine efficient so you see like uh, it's kind of weird doing the handles that are not my handles because i already have like a you know kind of like a, you have the system i have the system already how i'm doing my handles and this is a little different the way this handle was shaped but you just gotta you know work around you see me once in a while i clean the belt sometimes when the belt is gunked up i actually have the belt cleaning uh, stick also but uh, sometimes the, i have that piece of uh, horse stall mat handy and that works pretty much the same as that uh, belt cleaning the original belt cleaning uh, stick also kydex actually works very well keep the piece scrap pieces of kydex and they also help cleaning the belts if you have them gunked up from the from the grinding especially the handle material you don't really use it when you're grinding the metal because metal does not gunk up the belts it just it really just uh, breaks off the belt you know it just breaks off the grit the abrasives from it so you can really you know help prolong that but when you're working with the handle material wood micarta g10 carbon fiber you can always prolong that so I did the basic shaping of the handle on the belt sander and now the detail stuff where belt sander cannot get I clean up with this drum uh, sending drum drum sending drums in a drill press you know I mount it in put the vacuum there always try to keep the vacuum so wherever the the machine shoots the dust the vacuum hose is right there it helps to keep the place a little cleaner and uh, safer I mean I, I always have the when I'm in this room I always have my mask on and you definitely want to because even if you have the vacuum on there is always some speckles of dust all over the place I was actually putting a new drum sleeve on it because it was used up these go pretty well you know you use them pretty often and a lot when you're making handles they don't last too long especially on the materials like micarta because g10 is actually easy to work with also carbon fiber but micarta and wood uh, do you know destroy this uh, sending drums pretty quick uh, you're gonna see me changing the diameters i have a couple different diameters uh, actually the, what i use the most is three quarters of an inch one inch and one and a quarter inch diameters or oh, one and a quarter i'm not sure now if it's one and a quarter one and a half but those three drums i use the most out of everything i don't even use the small one like a half inch that's the size of the, what dremel normally comes with but these three i use a lot i buy those uh, sleeves at the super grid also same with my belts they're actually pretty durable and pretty affordable they are only 50 cents each which isn't all that bad definitely cheaper than what I used to buy in Home Depot so you see me doing like the details like a finger choke cleaning up the finger choke cleaning cleaning up that uh, kind of like a choke up little rest there that there is and uh, cleaning up that that sweep that uh, kind of like a heavier angle in the back of the handle there is that portion where it's, it doesn't contour with my belt wheel or belt center wheel so I had to do it here on these little smaller drums you see I cleaned up the whole tank and I'm gonna go back to the belt sander doing the contouring you know slim out the handles a little bit because they were really too thick they were thick with you know considering how thick the tank was plus the decent decent thickness handle material you end up with really thick handle so you need to take take off something from the sides and then start contouring you've seen me do this in a slow, slower speed also before when i'm you know 
radius and the corners, the top, top corners, the bottom corners and all that stuff. It's pretty much just running the corner of the handle all the way from the beginning to the end on the, you know, on the belt, on the bottom. Try to, it's pretty much by eye, you know, you do it by eye, try to do it even as even as possible. And you see the sparks because that's uh, that's when I actually touch the the tank. You see the sparks flying off, especially on the O1 tool. So there's a lot of carbon, so that's a lot of those sparks. So some basic basic uh, shaping is done already. Now I'm gonna remove the handle scales, and I will do shape and form the front of the scales because remember it was still from only as I cut them. So they weren't even, they weren't shaped, nothing. So I'm going to take, take off the scales, screw them together and uh, shape the front, you know, so they are nice and even and I'm going to put like a, you know, bevel on it. Same thing again, doing, always try to work on the bottom on that contact wheel. I find it the most comfortable and uh, kind of like the best control for me, the way I work. I have that nice, like I see, I have that sight all over it from the top, so I see the angles and everything, and uh, I find the best control for me. Some people do it differently on the with the plot, with the you know like the tool rest. I find this the most comfortable way for me and most accurate. But it always comes down to like whatever you prefer, you know. You try it and you find your way, what works the best for you. So I, you know, I got the bevels on it nice and rounded. I'm gonna do some basic hand finishing on that front because I won't be able to get there once I put the scales back on. So I'm doing it with the hand sponges, sanding sponges right now before I put the handles back together again. Now I'm gonna put the handles back on the knife and uh, I'll do some finishing touches with the with the with the drill press and with the sanding drums. I'm gonna do the finger groove, you know, like nice and deep now, the way it's supposed to be and uh, some other stuff you will see me as I'm gonna be doing it. Still doing only the two pivots while I'm working only two pivots because it's still gonna go on and off on and off so making it a little easier for me. This one was a tough one because the pivots were really really tight. I mean it's good because it's gonna it's not gonna go anywhere. But it's hard for you when you work with it because you do take it on and off a couple of times in process, at least I do. So it's always pain in the butt if it's so tight. So now I'm gonna you're gonna see I'm gonna be doing that finger grooves. It's actually not hard at all. You kind of like spin that spin that blade and try to do it evenly on both sides so we have the same angle when you when you're doing both sides or uh, sometimes you might want to do it different so you know you really actually copy your hand you know you ha you grab the handle and you see how your palm goes around the finger troll and how your finger goes you know the angles are sometimes a little different on each side so you might want to take that into account and you know do it like really you can really shape the handle perfectly to, to for your hand if you really want to. I see just going back and forth, back and forth, rounding off that finger shawl to make it nice and comfortable, no hot spots and stuff like that. Then doing the whole grind again, not grind but the the shape of the 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 main body of the handle, you know, that big curve, doing that top, it's kind of like a thumb ramp on top, beveling that also on the side, that was a really nice feature, once it had the handle scales on, it was actually very comfortable and, and it looked cool, it gave that really cool factor on that handle, especially combined with that layered, layered uh, paper carta. I did that kind of like a choke up little finger rest, index finger rest up front there. There was also kind of nice touch from this design with Robbie had. 
and I think at this point doing just the hand sanding up making sure everything is nice and smooth no kind of like a deep deep scratch lines and stuff like that this paper carta wasn't too hard to finish up fairly nice and never I don't like polishing you know buffing up the handles I do not like it did it a couple of times a lot of times often it didn't work out it's uh, it's a lot easier when you have removable handles when you can take it off and then it's pretty easy to buff it up you know nicely I just don't like the finish it's not as comfortable as if it's just hand rubbed with the hand sponges it actually it looks perfectly smooth this way but it has when you actually hold it it has different feeling but it looks almost identical to the to the buffed up uh, handles but it just the texture the traction you have in your hand is actually a lot better with the hand finishing uh, just some real like a little quick close-up of how it looks it's very comfortable <laughs> And now the last step is cleaning. I'm gonna put a little bit of that. Uh, it's butcher black conditioner. I'm gonna put it on the handle because that uh, my carta paper carta soaks in a lot of lot of you know sweat and everything. So a little oil will bring up the colors and uh, also helps prolonging that life. It won't soak in the sweat. And I'm gonna clean the blade, the duct tape residue, with the WD-40 just to get rid of the duct tape residue. And once that all that is done. I'm using that uh, clear coat, <laughs> I think it's clear coat, like I said, I'll show it in the video, I'll show it a little close up, what's the name actually, flute, flute film, <laughs> that's that uh, sheep's lanolin product, that oil to protect stuff, that is FDA, uh, you know, like food, food grade, and it works really well, it creates like a, like a film, coating over the blade uh, helps helps a lot with the rust protection so hope you enjoyed it guys you know handle is done next step next step is the kydex sheet thanks for watching take care stay safe and remember don't cut yourself